what I thought I'd do today is I thought I'd go through some of the spring 2024 anime and just do a tier list. I haven't done a tier list for a while. Uh, so there are a lot of shows that aired in spring 2024. Uh, I basically watched everything for my spring 2024 first impressions. This is more going to be a debrief on some of the shows I kept up with, some of the shows that I ended up watching more past the first episode. Uh, so I haven't finished everything, but I've watched a decent amount. This might be a little bit shorter than my other tier list videos because I want to more focus on the shows that I ended up watching more episodes of and uh, ended up ended up putting a little bit more time in. So, you know, even though watching anime is my <clears throat> job, uh, I only really, once I do my seasonal rundowns, I don't really keep up with the show unless I really feel like there's something more there or there's something more to explore there. Um, and I really don't want to get burnt out of anime. I could end up watching way more shows and get burnt out, but this is these are just the ones that interested me the most. Uh, essentially. And I think I ended up watching 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15. Round about like a, a decent, a decent portion of like round about 15 shows. Um, I will say I'm not like completely caught up to everything at the time of recording. The season hasn't technically ended yet. But if I don't get this recorded now, then you guys are never going to get this video because I'm going to be flying off to AX tomorrow. <clears throat> oh, who's, who's, who sent me a message? Okay, thank God. It's not for me. It's not for me. That's my Slack. That's my Slack, guys. That's my Slack. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. That's, that's my Slack. That's my Slack. <laughs> So I will try not to spoil uh, anything that I talk about, but some, some shows, you know, some shows I might need to talk about specific things, specific scenes. Um, we'll see, we'll see. We'll, I'll, I'll, I'll try to avoid spoilers for it. First up, we have Bartender. Now, the reason I watched a few more episodes of this was because I was a big fan of the original Bartender. At the time of recording, I've gone through about half of this show now. So, uh, basically, I, like, I have had a whole month of just streaming. And then, and then in the last few days, I basically just sat down and had my an anime marathon session where I, where I just watched a bunch of anime. And I was a big, big fan of the original Bartender. This show is just vibes. This, sh this show is vibes, man. The, the original was vibes. And without sounding like, <laughs> I, I don't know, how, how, do you, how do you explain that you really, really like this show about a guy who basically just makes the perfect drink for whatever customer is being served there? Uh, to fit whatever mood they are in. The original stood out because every it was like very, very episodic. Every new customer that came in the bar had a different backstory. And depending on that backstory, the bartender would choose a drink to perfectly complement what they needed with whatever troubles or whatever life problems or whatever thing was going on in their lives at that moment. And it was just a very, very cozy show. And this new version of Bartender, it completely kept that same vibe. It completely kept that same cozy vibe with a big difference, which I actually enjoyed, which it stopped being episodic. There was, this was much more of a character driven show than the than the original one. This one had a, a more more of an ongoing storyline with these girls trying to find the perfect bartender for their very prestigious bar. And they happen upon the bartender in the picture there. And one thing that uh, <laughs> one thing that 
sometimes I laugh at these like anime moments, right? Is you know when they try to make this they, number one, the drinks in this look refreshing as fuck. Okay, the drinks in this look so fucking refreshing. Every time I watch an episode of this, I'm like, shit. I I kind of I kind of want to go to a bar now. I kind of I kind of want to kind of kind of want to kind of want to get a drink now. Uh, but I will say now that I've lived in Japan, the big difference is I know some of these drinks because I've had some of these drinks before. And there was like, there were some points where my suspension of disbelief could only go so far. Like the very first drink the bartender serves is a highball, which is like, to put, thing, put things in perspective, it's like, I guess like the Japanese equivalent of, is, is there like a Western equivalent? Like a vodka Coke or something. The most bog standard drink you can get at any bar or club here in Japan. And this girl drinks it like she, like it's, it's like the best drink she's ever had in her life. <laughs> Just a Jack and Coke. Yeah, probably like a Jack and Coke. This, this girl has this fucking high, this girl has this highball and she's like, oh, oh, this is like the, this is like the highball that was served by the gods oh my god what is this and i'm like motherfucker this is just whiskey soda man <laughs> it, it can't be that good it can't be that good but you know what i what i liked is that no matter what the drink was it always it, it always made it feel like the drink was just so fucking good and so fucking refreshing and it, and it always paired with what the person needed in that exact moment um Another cool one one of one of the things I found interesting was in the original bartender, the bartender, uh, the bartender never missed. He never ever missed at all, right? But in this one, there was like an episode where there was a storyline where the bartender tried to serve this old guy. This is like an old grumpy guy who wants drinks served like a specific way. Um, and so the bartender, you know, he 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 hears the story tries to serve him a drink, and he's like, the, the old guy's like, it's shit. What the fuck is this? It's, this is dog water. This is garbage. Ew. And I was like, well, number one, bit harsh. Bit fucking harsh. Bit, bit fucking... <laughs> so he served Chris. <laughs> he, ser he served Chris. <laughs> he served Chris broad. <laughs> um, but eventually, eventually, he finds out a bit more about the old guy and eventually he's able to perfect the drink that he wants based on the drinks that this old man used to have as when he was a lot younger. I was about to say as a kid, you can't drink as a kid. Uh, the drinks when he was a lot younger with a bartender that he really connected with at that time. Um, and I thought that was, I thought that was very interesting to see that this wasn't just about always the vibes, always about serving the perfect drink, but there's a bit of like character arcs and plot progression in there as well. Um, still very comfy, still very cozy. I'm going to give this one a B. This was a solid show. Everyone's like, oh, oh, B mid, oh, B, B mid. B is like, to me, B is like solid. It's, it's, it's like it's like a solid show. I, I've, I've very much enjoyed this and I'm probably going to finish it. Uh, this is one of the shows where I um, I need a drink in hand. It's the end of work and you just want to chill out to a nice cozy little show. All right. Um, I haven't watched Blue Archive aside from a few episodes. Uh, I did not get it. I do not understand it. Um, and then so my... <laughs> The re I just wanted I just wanted to put this up on here because it's just <laughs> Blue Archive fans. Let's let's talk about the scene. Blue Archive fans, what 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 would you rate this Blue Archive fans? Blue Archive fans, um so I would say that it is very well animated. It's well animated. It is, it's well animated. Um and then, so, watch like two or three episodes. I was like, this probably isn't for me. I keep seeing scenes pop up on my Twitter. I keep seeing scenes pop up on my Twitter. What's up with the feet scene, guys? What is it? <laughs> guys, guys, are, you, are we trying to beat the allegations here, guys? <laughs> are, you, are you guys actively trying to beat the allegations? It's law accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, 
<laughs> bro, are we are, are we are we going down the doctor disrespect route? Or like, what's 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 going on here, guys? What's 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 happening, Ryan? What's it's 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 a cannon event. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh oh. um I would like to know because I was curious, because maybe I'm gonna start playing the gacha game. I don't know. I, I watched a few episodes out of curiosity to see, hey, why do people like Blue Archive? Why is this such a big hit? Um maybe there's more going on than meets the eye. And from what I've seen, and from what I've seen out of context, it is uh, completely... <laughs> from what I've seen out of context, uh, you guys aren't being the allegations at all. And it's actually a very, it's actually a faithful adaptation of that part of the game. <laughs> So, uh, I'm not gonna tear this since I haven't, haven't watched enough of this. I just- I just wanted to ask. I just wanted to ask you guys. Why is everyone crying? That's- that's what I wanna know. That's what I wanna know. Uh, I'm gonna make a new tier list for this. Uh, this is, um... Oh. No, that was wrong. Uh, I'm gonna make- I'm, I'm gonna- I'm gonna make a new tier list just for Blue Archive. Uh All right there 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 you go there you go there you go <laughs> you, you you guys go there you guys go there All right <laughs> Moving moving oh sorry sorry <laughs> Moving on <laughs> Two jellyfish can't swim in the night, I believe. I believe that's the name. I believe that's the name of. Is it jellyfish can't swim in the night? <clears throat> yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I will say this was one of my highest anticipated shows coming into this and the first few episodes were fucking fantastic it was it was absolutely bloody fantastic and then i felt like it just lost a lot of steam um a lot of people are saying the ending was rushed yes i would say the ending the ending was rushed i i i completely agree with that but aside from that it just felt like the personal stakes just didn't feel as urgent is what I would say. Like it, it, it almost felt like it. It almost felt like the second half of this. I wasn't as invested in what these girls were trying to achieve. It was like the second half was just so much more messy than the first half. The first half was really, really, really good. Uh, I liked it all the way up to whatever the episode with the mum going through her idol arc. Um, I believe that's like episode five or something, episode five or six. Everything up to then, that was like super interesting character drama, super interesting personal stakes. Everyone had a very, very interesting story. And I was like, oh, oh, okay, okay. This is building up. This is going to be building up to something really, really emotional, really, really good. I'm getting invested in these characters. And then it just kind of, and then I just kind of like... I don't know. It just wasn't as interesting anymore. We had a whole episode where one of the girls just gets some motorcycle license and then and the, uh and then she drives drives off with one of the girls and I'm like okay, this that's 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 cool, I guess. That's 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 cool. Um I I'm I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure, you know. I'm not I'm not really sure what the character arc Sorry, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not as invested in this character arc as what you were going through previously, but all right, maybe this is building up to something. Um and then we got to the final episode and then everything just seemed to be resolved really quickly and it just wasn't as good as what the first half in my eyes kind of like promised it would be. And I'm very very sad because from a director standpoint, this is so well directed as well. Um and I just thought I just thought it was going to have a much higher peak at the ending. 
Um, I'm very, very sad. No context. Like, I was expecting it to be up here. I was expecting it to be up here. And then the more episodes that came out, I was like, all right, it's, it's A tier um, right now. Maybe the, maybe the ending is going to save it. Maybe the ending is going to save it. Uh, and then I don't, th I don't think it, I don't think it's bad enough to be like be B tier because I still think the first half is still very, very strong. I would still put it like at like low A tier though. Um, you know, I, I, I would still, I, I still, I still think it does like a lot of things in the first half. Really, really cool. I was invested in a lot of storylines. I just, I, I, I think I came into this wrong thinking it was going to be like Soriyori. Is that the name? Um, the Antarctica show, the Antarctica show. Uh, guys, what's what's the Antarctica show? What's the a place further than the universe? I think a place further than the universe sets the bar so high for like cute girls doing amazing things that I was expecting this to be on a similar category or of a similar caliber, and unfortunately. While the first few episodes really did make it seem like it was going to go that way, it didn't end up delivering the more episodes that came out. Um, yeah, I maybe maybe there's an opportunity for season two because this is an anime original. Maybe there's an opportunity for a season two where they do even more amazing things. But as it stands, yeah, this was a disappointment, even though it was in A tier. And it's only a disappointment because I had such high expectations of it. Yeah, I was crying the first few episodes, bro. There were so many moments in the first few episodes that got me so emotional, man. And so many well-directed scenes as well. <clears throat> Jellyfish can't swim in the night is what it's called. All right, next up. Slime season three. Or is it season three or season four? I can't even remember nowadays. Sli the new season of Slime. Now, I've been talking a lot about slime because i had heard a lot of people talking about a lot of different things about slime as a big fan of that time i got reincarnated as uh, that time i got reincarnated as a slime I'm, I'm a big fan of this and i have read the manga and i didn't think i was gonna go out and watch this because um i didn't think i was gonna go out and watch this because I'd already read the manga and I was like, okay, I've seen everything I need. And then people, when this series, when this season came out, people kept talking about it being like, oh, it's, it's, it's bad. It's, 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 it's shit. And I was like, why, uh, why, why is it bad? And they were like, oh, it's meetings upon meetings upon meetings upon meetings. Um, and I was like, well, I kind of like meetings, especially in like a isekai civilization anime. You know, I, that's, that's what I kind of like. I like a good engaging dialogue. Um, because in the manga, at least, it didn't feel like it was, it went on forever. It didn't feel like, it didn't feel like the meetings went on forever. There was always progression in the meetings. So I was like, ah, oh, people are probably, people are probably just exaggerating this a bit. And then I watched the anime and I was like, holy shit, this is so fucking slow. Holy shit. <laughs> Wait. I was like, I, I only watched a few episodes, but I think the big thing, I think the big difference is that this is anime and with manga, you can just read throughout your own pace, right? You can read throughout your own pace. And so it felt a lot faster when I read this in the manga and in the anime, it just kept going on and on episode after episode. And the worst thing is it wasn't like it was there was anything interesting going on in terms of like the visuals. People have done interesting dialogue scenes in anime before. People have found a way to do interesting conversation and, and do meetings in an interesting way. This one, Slime did not do that. Slime, Slime was just like static camera, static camera, static camera, static camera. And then there's like, there's like barely any movement into anything. Um... And I was like very, and I was very disappointed. Um, I, I am probably not going to finish the season. I am probably just going to continue reading the manga. I think this is a kind of a read the manga tier. Um, I didn't finish it. Read the manga. This is, this is, this is like, this is like C tier for me.
This was this was C tier or just read the manga or light novel. That's 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 probably the better way to uh that's probably the better way to get through this. Speaking of an isekai I did enjoy, it's the I don't remember the name of this one. <laughs> Uh, the Aristocrats Isekai. The Aristocrats Isekai. Uh, appraisal. The oh, the appraisal Isekai. What the fuck is the name of this? Let me let me get up the name of this. <laughs> All the names. Reincarnated as an aristocrat with an appraisal skill. Um, yeah, that, that, that was the name. That was, that was the name. Oh, oh I, I put the wrong one. I'm going to close some of these tabs. I have, I have a lot of tabs open. And it is confusing me. Fucking tabs I have open, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, I actually enjoyed this one. Uh, I have a soft spot. You know, originally this was occupied by slime, but I have a soft spot, I've come to realize, for kingdom building isekai or kingdom building um, fantasy shows. And the thing about isekai, here's the secret. Here's the secret about isekai shows, right? Here's, here's the secret about being an isekai trash man like me. You can get the same template, the same template. Guy goes to a fantasy world, finds out he has something special, takes advantage of that power, gets OP, yada, yada, yada. You can take that template. What me as an isekai trash man looks for is just that one thing it does differently. That one thing that it does differently. It doesn't, you can follow the exact same formula, but I am I am looking for that one interesting hook. That, you know, one that one interesting idea that it does a little bit differently from everything else. And the thing that interests me about this one, so his power is that he has an appraisal skill. So what that means is that he can see everyone's stats about what skills they will excel at. Maybe this one has an S tier potential in archery. This one has an S tier potential in diplomacy. And so what he does with that is he's able to recruit the perfect team to basically run this kingdom. And that was like the interesting part of me. He can see if you're a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So, yeah, so I was gonna say, so chat, someone in the chat say it. So, this one is low key a HR isekai. <laughs> This this one, Loki, is like, if you have the perfect HR in your company, how are you going to run it? This one is like, this he this this kingdom has perfect HR. No one is upset with the role I, they have because everyone has the perfect role that is suited for their skill sets. Um, and that's pretty much it. He hires the perfect people to run his kingdom, to run his army, and then he basically just takes over his his little it's not it's not even a kingdom it's literally just like a small um not states small county he literally he literally gets in charge of this small county he does he eventually because his team is so good because his hr is so good he gets noticed by the king of the larger region and then eventually the country and then they eventually go to war with each other um and that's pretty and that's basically it and that's all of re and as long as there's something that goes on that is an original idea that I haven't seen before in Isekai, that's all that really needs to happen for me to get hooked on it. Um, and that was it. That, that I really, really enjoyed this one. I love the kingdom building aspect of this one. Um, and I just, I just thought, I just thought this was a concept that I uh, hadn't seen before. Um, this one also goes in the B tier. It's a. Uh, it was it was cool. Uh, I marathoned it, and then that was it. That was it. 
Enjoyable show. Enjoyable show. HR Isekai is exactly, exactly what I never ever need to see. <laughs> hey man, hey man. All right, before we, before we get to, uh, before we get to Konosuba, speaking of isekai that don't do anything, speaking of speaking of other isekai this season, um, a lot of people hyped up Seventh Prince. Uh, a lot of people love this. A lot of people like this. S tier, S tier. Seventh Prince, the best power fantasy isekai, the best power isekai, S tier. I didn't like it. Isekai trash, man. I didn't fucking like it. I didn't like it, guys. I did, I did not like it. <laughs> I did not like it. I, I watched, I watched like six episodes to see what the hype behind this was. And I was like, what, what is special about this isekai? I don't understand. I don't understand what is special about this isekai, guys. Nah, man, but your opinion is wrong. <laughs> All right, number one. All right, we got a we got a little Shota boy, who who is like obsessed with magic. He gets reincarnated as the seventh prince. Uh, I keep calling this an isekai. It isn't even technically an isekai. That was my bad, guys. It's just a reincarnation anime. But honestly, I couldn't. Uh, you know, it's it's same same fucking shit. Basically, same fucking shit. Um. Number one, so it's a story of this boy who is not interested in nothing but magic, and he is OP. Why are you, uh, why, <laughs> why are you giving him that character design? <laughs> why are his thighs so thick? Why, why does he have, <laughs> why? Why does he have those hip? Why is he caked up? What? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was like I was like every every single shot of this kid I was like damn he got them hentai thighs man he got them hentai thighs you know it's 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 the it's it's the little it's the it's the fucking thighs with the little pink highlight on the knees as well <laughs> I'm, I'm just like I was just, I, I just, that just made me laugh, man. That just, that just made me laugh. I was like, God, God damn. I've, I've, I've seen this character design before, but this, it is in a completely different genre. Um, but aside from that, because this kid, uh, is basically thicker venti is, uh, what he reminded me of. Um, I recently just followed, and I hear Gigax say hentai thighs. Yes, welcome to a Gigax stream. He's thick henty. Uh, venti. <laughs> uh, number two, as I've already mentioned, I like the one thing that gets me invested in an isekai is just seeing, like, a new idea, I guess. And... I can see that this was an is uh, I keep calling it an isekai. I can see that this was an anime that did not really take itself seriously. Obviously, it's about this boy. It's meant to be like a fucking funny, I guess I guess I guess like a funny show where this boy finds out he likes magic and he's OP and then he doesn't he doesn't care about anything aside from the magic. Um but I've just, I've like, in terms of like a self-aware show that doesn't take itself seriously, after seeing Eminence and Shadow, I'm just like, this, this does not, you know, that, this, this does not hit the mark at all. Um, it didn't really do anything that I hadn't seen before, even in the isekai genre, aside from thick shoulder thighs, uh, thick shoulder thighs. And that is not enough for me to, to, uh, that is, that is not enough for me to get invested in the show. Um, the animation was above average. A lot of people were calling it great from the scenes that I saw. It was like, it was like decent. It was like decent. Um, but you know, in terms of like animation 
versus some of the other action shows that are airing this season. It didn't even go above and beyond those either. So I didn't really get it. I, I didn't. I, I I didn't really get the hype behind it. And that and this is like this is like me as the full on trash man isekai. Um, yeah, out of the episodes I watched, didn't really enjoy it. Uh, this was like, this was like, this was like slime tier for me. It was, it was like C tier for me. Did you watch it at 1.25 speed? No, no, I didn't. See, I only watched, it's, it's a meme, it's a meme, but, um, it's worse than slime now. These I, I'm not putting these all in order. This is just like same tier. I, I don't I don't really know. I just didn't really enjoy it that much. Um, so I only watch it at like 1.25, 1.5 speed when I'm doing the seasonal rundown. When it when this is a job, um, these are all the things that I watched in my own free time out of out of my own enjoyment. And um, obviously, when I watch it for my own enjoyment. I'm not going to watch it at two times speed, you know? I read the manga. I haven't watched the anime. The manga was hype as hell because of how detailed all of the artwork. Ah, okay, okay. So I'm guessing the art... I'm guessing the art for this goes really hard then. Um, because, unfortunately, if the art was like god tier, if the art was god tier, that didn't translate into the anime. Um, I didn't watch this one. I don't know what this one's up here. Is this one good, chat? Is this one good? I'm only, I only saw two episodes for my, um, I, I only saw two episodes for, the only thing I remember about this anime is the girl and the brain rot OP. That's it. That's, it's the girl and the brain rot OP. I watched two episodes for my seasonal rundown. And I was like, ah, this, this doesn't seem like it's going to go do anything new. D, it's goofy. <laughs> Probably D. All right. All right. Well, yeah, because if I were to judge this on the two episodes I watched, it would be here. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? <laughs> Pure brain rot. Pure brain rot. Is it worse than the slime season? Is it worse than the slime season? <laughs> okay, okay. Next up, we have Konosuba Season 3. To round off this Isekai segment. Now, I am a big fan of Konosuba. And obviously, Konosuba is one of my favorite Isekai. And I don't really have much to say about this. It's just more good Konosuba. It's really, really good to see... Uh, it's really, really good to see the gang back together again. And I think this might be, in my opinions, it, might, it fell off hard. I disagree. This, this, might be, this, might, this might be one of my... Like, I don't think it's the best, best season. But I think it's one of, like... It, it's, it's definitely not the worst. Uh... One of my big issues with season two of Konosuba is some of the jokes started to get a little bit repetitive, a little bit like, oh, okay, we're, we're, doing, we're doing this joke again. We're doing, we're doing that joke again. Ah, oh, okay. Darkness, Darkness really, really likes, uh, is, is a sadist. Oh no, sorry. Darkness is a masochist, yada, yada, yada. I felt like this season felt way more fresh. A lot of the comedy of this season felt like it played less on repeated jokes and more on just the pure chemistry between all of the four different people. I felt like they got that spot on. I, Konosuba is at the point now where you can just stick these characters in different wild situations and just let their characterization play out. And it's just going to be bants. And that's exactly what happened. Um... It, it relied less on one singular formula and it relied more on just these characters being the characters that we know just in different situations. And that's all you need. That's, 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 really, that's really all you need for this one. Um, I'm still a few episodes behind, so I don't know how this one uh, resolves itself. But I mainly watch 
Konosuba, it's this this one is basically the Always Sunny in Philadelphia Isekai edition. And I really, really enjoyed this one. This one delivered this season. Sticks the ending. Yes. 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 Sticks the ending. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one an S tier. If you just want to watch a bunch of dickheads. If you just want to watch a bunch of dickheads be in an isekai world, just be fucking degenerates, be the most awful people in the world to each other and to everyone around them, um, and just ruin each other's day, and uh, very occasionally do something nice for each other, Konosuba is it. And unless it goes back to the season two repeated jokes a lot, um, then, uh, then it's going to remain S tier. I, I really, really like Konosuba. Next up, we have Train to the End of the World. This was another disappointing one for me. This was another disappointing one for me. Uh, if, you, if you remembered the... If you remembered... Um, so, I'm about... About seven episodes through this one. And if you remembered when I watched the trailer for this one, I thought that there was an inkling, an opportunity, uh, not even opportunity, like a hint that this was, there was going to be this big turn or this, this you know, this, this big reveal or something that uh, really changes up what the story is. Because the, the story in episode one and two is just very, very weird. It's, it's, it's just weird. It is cute girls do cute things, but just in a, like, a weird setting. And I thought there was going to be something interesting that happens because I was like, oh, maybe, maybe there are some dark things being foreshadowed here and there. Maybe there's going to be a dark turn. And then this is going to be, like, not girls last tour. Um, what the fuck is that? The fuck is that zombie anime? The fuck is that zombie anime? Um, school Life? Is that the one? School Life? School Life? School Life, yeah. There was like, there was like gonna be a twist or this dark turn. Um, and then it just, it just ended up just getting like weirder and weirder. And it was, yeah, it was, it was cute girls do cute things a lot of the time. And... Maybe I just wasn't in the mood for that, but I was a bit disappointed. Maybe I just set my expectations wrong. Uh, because I, you know, I did enjoy Girls Last Tour a lot. This was just, this was just a bit too weird for my liking. <laughs> this, this, this was just, this was just a bit too weird for my liking. Maybe there was someone who vibes with this one. Maybe, maybe that was, just, maybe this is a very vibey show. Uh, I just personally didn't vibe with this one. I don't know. I enjoyed it. It was it was better than these two, but definitely wasn't as good as these two. Let's just put it like low B for now. Let's just let's just, let's just put it low B for now, and we'll see what else what else comes up. Okay. Hey, honey, doing a little sometimes dance. Like what? You know, sometimes like I'm really. Some days, yeah. After I get like coffee, cafe. Yeah. Just like saw the coffee, and I never read the coffee because I was just like, you know, who reads the coffee when they're drinking? Yeah. But it was in a cup. It's from I didn't know, and I, I I don't look at the name of the place either. It's like coffee that looks good. I'll order that. Right? You do the same, right? When you order some food, you're like, ah, oh, just don't care. It's like a CBD special coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Yeah. <laughs> It's in on there, it's like CBD specialty coffee. And I'm like, oh, okay, well maybe that's why I've been EP. Are you, are you awake now? I didn't order that today, so yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. But there's a mosquito in also. Okay, so look at it. Look at the mosquito bite! CBD? Goodbye. Kill it, kill it. Yeah. Is that legal? Yes, yeah, CBD is legal in... <clears throat> is legal. I just realized CBD coffee. What the fuck? 
Um, CBD is legal in Japan. It's THC that is not legal in Japan. See, what is CBD? I don't know. I don't know what CBD is. Um, uh... I, I, all I know is it, it's like that's one of the things you find in like weed, but it's not the part that gets you high. It's, it's something, it's, it's something else. The less good part of weed. Okay, there, there you go. The part that makes you more relaxed or whatever. Okay, okay. That's, that's what CBD is. What's the point of it? I don't know. I, I, I I don't, I don't, I don't really do it. Uh, I don't really take it. So I don't, I don't know, unfortunately. Next up, we have Windbreaker, which I did end up watching almost every episode of. I have gone on record to say that I am not the biggest fan of delinquent anime. Um, you know, don't really have any drive to see Tokyo Revengers. I have seen some delinquent shows. Uh, I've seen Crow Zero, even though that's like a live action movie, I, I believe. Um, the better Tokyo Revengers. Okay. So Windbreaker is a delinquent anime about this tsundere guy who tries to be the strongest in his school. And then they end up getting into fucking gang fights with other schools, and then they have a fucking tournament arc one on one. And it is animated by Studio Cloverworks. And the thing about Studio Cloverworks is that, yes, they did make Promised Neverland season two. Yes, they did make that other anime original that ended up flopping at the ending. But there's one thing that you can't say about Studio Cloverworks, and that and that is that they make badly, they make bad looking shows because this show has great animation, like all of their other works. The fight animation was good for this, especially the one in the very, very first episode where he, the, the fucking main guy takes on like 20 different guys. And it's like, oh, it, it's almost like a, it's almost like a, like a martial arts film where a lot of it is just very very long shots that are unbroken and normally with action scenes you you have like you have like a punch and then it cuts you have like 20 million cuts per action scene this one there was just like so many long shots and i was really really impressed uh with that fight choreography so the action in this was very very good that was pretty much it <laughs> <sighs> that was pretty much that was pretty much the only enjoyment I got out of the show. That was that was that was pretty much the only enjoyment I got out of the show, man. Um the characters just felt like yeah. <laughs> Thank you, honey. I didn't I Okay, okay. Maybe maybe there's maybe there's one thing that is that I find that I can't get over with delinquent anime, right? There's there's one thing I can't get over. So these are a bunch of fucking high schoolers uh who act like who act like they're a fucking Yakuza gang, man. <laughs> so these fucking high schoolers, they get into like gang fights and it's like fucking it's life or death for them, man. It is life or death for them. They're like, ah, ah, oh, my friend, you took down my friend. I will have I I I will revenge my friend. And I'm like, bro, it's just it's just it's, it's, it's fucking, it's, it's fucking high school, man. Was Joe, bro, chill, chill, man, chill. I remember. Okay, so this, this is gonna, be, this is gonna go off topic. So, um, there was actually a, there was actually a moment. There was actually a moment. Uh, the closest thing that, that has happened to me IRL to this delinquent anime, is that my school, uh, my high school back in back in the UK. So we had a rivalry with a neighboring high school and we would talk shit about each other constantly and i remember one time um it was after school and we were we were just playing football and suddenly suddenly a bunch of these kids come up to like a bunch of these a bunch of these kids 
from the rival school. They they just fucking invade our fields. And um and like they're talking, they're fucking talking shit. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they're there. They they are giving us a bit of lip. One of our one of our guys goes to talk towards their guys. Um and we're just like we there's there's nothing's being thrown. We're just like we're just like talking shit to each other. At least I'm just there in the corner. I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not up there in the front. I don't give a shit about this. Um and then I saw one of the guys, he had a fucking I shit you not, he had a metal chain and he just starts fucking he just starts fucking spinning it and being like, Oh, oh, look at me, I'm so hard. I'm a fucking 15 year old kid, I got a fucking chain. You wanna fuck with me, bruv? You wanna fuck with me? And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So this is like the closest thing that has happened IRL to what the fu whatever the fuck they are going through. You know what happened? You know what fucking happened? You know what happened? A teacher came out. Teacher came out and goes, "Oi! What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing?" He comes running out and then the kids scatter because of course they <laughs> The, t the teacher comes out and the kids just scatter and that is it that was the gang fight of my school man teacher comes out starts shouting the kids scatter and then that's that's it that end of story <laughs> end, end of story man <laughs> <laughs> that was it. If there was a single teacher in this, if there was a single teacher in the storyline, not even no anime, no no anime, man, no no anime, <laughs> no anime at all. Um, so <laughs> so I just find it, I just find it, I just find it fucking hilarious how you have fucking rival gangs in this high school and everyone's fighting for life and death. Um, and I'm just sitting there being like, yo, this is, this is fucking cringe, bro. Yo, you guys are high schoolers. Yo, chill, chill the fuck out. It's not, it's not that serious, guys. Chill the fuck out. All right. <laughs> chill, chill, chill the hell out. Um, that was unrelated to the actual story, but uh, that's something I, that's something that I can never get over watching delinquent anime. Number two, though. Um, I just did not find... A single interesting character in this. Uh, I would be invested in the cool action and cool fights if I actually gave a shit about any of the characters. Um, it just seems like every character was every character. Yeah, you know, it's it's always this thing where every one of these boys needs to have a little bit quirk, a little bit of a quirk. Ooh, ooh, this guy's a little bit strange. Ooh, this guy really, this guy talks a little bit weird. He t he's a little quirky. Uh, there's there's this one Genki guy that's like, oh, Shobu, Shobu, let's fight. Let's come out here and fight right now. And it's it's just, <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I'm like, all right, every character is like quirky. The main guy is, so fucking tsundere it 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 actually physically pains me how tsundere he is and it's if if the if there was a female character that was this tsundere uh i'd probably be like yo just 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 chill a little bit man just 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 chill <laughs> just just chill just chill i'm i'm lying i'm lying you know i love my tsundere you know you know i love my tsundere man <laughs> um what can I say? Vegeta, Vegeta is the more superior Tsundere, man. Um, yeah, like all the characters, it seems like, it seems like all the characters had this weird quirky trait and it always did this thing where we'd find out their backstory in the middle of the fight and then the fight, the fight would play out backstory. Suddenly there would be like, aha, okay, actually, I've the backstory has powered me up now. Now we will do like everything was just so formulaic. Everything, all the anime fights were. If you literally made a parody of anime fights of how they played out, this every fight aside from the animation and choreography, which was fantastic, every fight from a narrative perspective plays out exactly how you would expect an anime fight to play out. And we have we had like five back to back. In uh, we had, we had like five back to back when they did the tournament arc or whatever the whatever that thing was. Um, so I didn't really enjoy this aside from the kick-ass animation. Um, 
I wish I wish I I wish I could understand. I wish I could get into delinquent anime more. I would say this one's a high B for the animation. The main antagonist antagonist was so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Twitter ain't gonna like this, man. This this is this is my opinions, man. This is this is my opinions. <laughs> like I, I was there for the cool looking action and it delivered on that. Alright, next up. <clears throat> Slan is the show for 10 minutes. Hi B. Look, look, look. Good action. Good action. What can I say? <laughs> monkey brain. Monkey brain. Ooh, ooh, monkey brain. <laughs> All right, Kaiju number eight, the Shonen adaptation, the big new Shonen IP of this season. So I had only read the first few chapters of Kaiju number eight coming into this, and then afterwards, I stopped reading and I waited for an eventual anime adaptation, which did eventually end up happening. So we got the anime and it's by Production IG and Production IG did a fantastic job. Um, it was a great job all around. No complaints about the animation at all uh, or the execution of some of the fight scenes. In terms of the story, I do like the fact that the main character is in his 30s um, and he's a little bit older and that is very, very rare to see that as a shonen, especially like a shonen action show. <laughs> don't call me, don't, don't call him relatable, chat. Come on, come on, chat. Don't call him relatable. <laughs> I don't relate to him, chat. I don't, I don't relate to him to, I don't relate to him at all. Shut up, chat. Shut up. <laughs> shut up, shut up. Okay. Not relate to war at all. But Okay, so it's it's very, very rare to see that he, you know, a main character in a shonen action show be a 30 year olds i thought okay this is gonna be refreshing finally he just like me for real all right all right finally finally an anime that's not set in high school with a high school protagonist um and then they didn't do as much as i wanted with that i don't know if we're too early in because a lot of the times he still does act like that same righteous 15 year old uh that same righteous 15 year old goody two-shoe high school shonen protagonist uh except they just slapped except they just you know slapped a slapped a number on him uh, i wish i wish they did a little bit more with the facts of you know aside from aside from him being uh, aside from everyone fucking joking about him um i would like to i would have liked to see a little bit more in terms of like him being a bit more mature using his wisdom at thir his 30 year old wisdom <laughs> his his 30 year old wisdom you know <laughs> if um a little bit more than what they showed in the anime uh they showed it a little bit but um you know i thought i thought it was going to be a a much bigger factor so that was you know that was possible for that aspect, maybe they're going to delve into that even more in future seasons. The biggest thing that I was like, eh, about is that it does exactly what it says. It does exactly what it needs to um, in terms of like a show and an action show. And it doesn't really do anything else right now, at least right now. Maybe they do more interesting things. The reason I bring up the 30 year old aspect is because that was the biggest thing in my mind that made it stand out right from the get-go from every other shonen out there. Um, so that was the one thing I had, that was the one unique thing I had going for it. Um, everything else was pretty much standard shonen action affair. Nipple peeing, all right, I will give it that. That is pretty new. I've never seen nipple peeing before. And it was good. I very, very much had a good time. The shonen formula works for a reason. 
The Shonen formula is great. The Shonen formula, all right, we've seen it a million times before, but it's a different setting. I do like the kaiju aspect of it. Um, but there is no different from like him being a kaiju, from like Kaneki being a ghoul, Eren being a titan, whatever. It's like main character wants to destroy or like wants to exterminate X thing. And then it turns out he becomes X thing. Um, Though probably my favorite scene out of this is the fact that he is a half kaiju. I don't know what he is right now. Maybe he's like a, maybe he's a half kaiju or kaiju human hybrid. And he had to hide that fact, even being on the kaiju extermination team. That was my favorite aspect of that. And the most interesting part was, I guess... I'm trying to find a way if I can say no spoilers. <laughs> so, um, how do I? My favorite aspect, or uh, my favorite part, was seeing, was seeing the payoff for that specific plot line and where that is going um so that specific plot line hasn't been totally resolved as of episode 11 which is how far i got in that one but that was that was like see, seeing seeing that seeing the payoff to that specific plot line uh was i believe was in my mind very very interesting uh, aside from that Cool kaiju fights, cool action. It's a good time. It's it doesn't do anything too new, uh, but it's still a solid A for me. It's still a solid A. My Hero Academia. Can I um too high? No, no, no. It's it's no. It's still got it's still got really good animation and it's still really enjoyable. Still really enjoyable. Kaiju number eight. High, like, solid A. Solid A. <clears throat> My Hero Academia. I, I've only watched a few episodes of this. How many episodes is out right now? How many episodes is out? Um, let me double check this. Nine? Oh shit, I'm not as I'm not as up to date as I thought I was. I'm not as up to date as I thought it was. So my hero academia Again with the spoilers. I had high hopes coming into my this season of My Hero Academia. Um I actually think the previous season of My Hero Academia was one of the strongest seasons I'd seen thus far. And with some of the things that it was setting up, I was like, oh, okay, this is going into a really, really interesting direction and introducing some interesting characters and, uh, you know, expanding the world of My Hero Academia to outside of Japan. To international heroes. I really, 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 really like that concept. And then something happened. And I got salty. I was salty. <laughs> I, I was salty. <laughs> because there was a direction that I thought this new season of My Hero Academia was going to go and then it didn't go that direction and then I <laughs> and then I was like oh I'll, I'll, I'll catch up to it later I'll, I'll catch up to the rest of My Hero Academia later as it stands right now from when I stopped watching this season I don't know how they're going to make it interesting I don't know how they're going to make it as interesting as the previous season um I may, like, 
anyone who caught up to this season, maybe you guys can tell me, but I thought one of the most interesting things that made the last season work was it felt like a climax to all of these storylines that had been built up. And then on top of that, you had something really, really interesting being done by Deku's, uh, with Deku's character. Pretty much the only time I have actually been interested in Deku's character, but all of that got resolved at the end of the season. All, all of that got resolved. And I really, really, th I really, really wished that it didn't get resolved by the end of the season because, because once you resolve that side of like emo Deku, it's, it's like, I, I, I want to myself where this is going to go after that. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't know with the four, three, four episodes that I've watched this season. Um, I don't know if something else pops off or they do something new or they introduce something new. I thought that new cool thing was going to be the introduction of the international community and the international heroes or something. Um, turns out that's not going to be the case. Uh, so I literally don't know where this is going to go. Um, even the fight scenes are boring this season. I, I've heard a lot of things about the power scaling for this season. And I will say the one, it, it does kind of feel like we're getting to that point with at least this first fight. I, I can give a pass for the first fight of this season because these are meant to be the two like mega titans fighting off, like fighting off against each other. Um, we have, we have, we have that. So I can, I can give a pass for that. They have like obviously way more OP power aspects compared to a lot of like previous seasons, but I can give a pass for that. So I don't know if the power scaling gets even more ridiculous. Um, I will reserve my judgment until I fully see where this, where the rest of the season goes. As, as it is now with, I guess like, half-ish of the, the season that I've seen. Um, it was shocking. It was shocking. I'll give it a, like a low A. It was, it was shocking. Depending on how the season goes, it might be there. It might, it, might, it, might, it might go down. If it does something interesting, it might go up. That's too high now. Nah. I think people... I think people are... I think people are way too harsh on My Hero Academia, man. Are you, are you going to tell me, are you going to tell me that what you see in My Hero Academia is that much worse than Kaiju number eight? Are you going to say that it's that much worse than Kaiju number eight? <laughs> yes. Yes. I disagree. I disagree. At worst, at worst, it's like here. At worst, it's like here. The reason, the reason people are really, really harsh on My Hero Academia, me included, is not because it's a bad show. It's, it's because when we started watching My Hero Academia, it was up here. That's, that's, where it, that's where it like laid in our minds, right? That's where it laid in our minds. And the reason why My Hero Academia gets a lot of flack is because, is because as, it go, as we grow on, we want, it to reach, we want it to reach back up there. But every time we watch a new season, it's either like there or there or there. I don't think it's ever gotten here. Um, you know, that's, it's, it's not so, it's not so much the quality of My Hero Academia, it's the disappointment because we were invested as fans. Um, and I, th I think that's the, that's the big reason why a lot of people are super harsh in My Hero Academia. As it is now, low A tier, um, low, yeah, as it is now, low A tier, I have to see if they do something more interesting. The fight. I'm judging this off the fight. I was very, very salty, but it was a very, very cool fight. It was a very, very cool fight. And it was shocking. <laughs> okay. Girls band cry. Girls band cry. I'll tell you I'll tell you what the spiritual successor of Bochi is. We have fucking found it. <laughs> what a good show. What a great fucking show, man. Oh. Oh, God. Have I been tricked into watching an, uh, an, an idol anime? Idol fans. 
Idol fans. Idol fans. Let's let's okay. Let's just let's just let's just squash our beef for a second here. Let's just let's just squash our beef for a second. So a lot of people keep telling me a lot a lot of people keep telling me, hey, can you please stop calling girls bands cry and idol anime? Um, and the reason I initially called Girls Band Cry and Idol Anime is because the first episode felt struct structurally felt very, very, very similar to an Idol Anime. No, they don't play Idol music, but the thing that really like took me out, I'm like, oh, is this is this a fucking Idol Anime? Is when at the end of the first episode you have this girl going into a new place. She, you know, meets this other girl playing the guitar. This other girl has beef with two people on the streets. They run away. And then for some reason, at the end, there's this big climax where they all come together and then they do like a show together. And then I'm like, why are the people they were just beefing with in this music aspect? I thought, I thought you guys were, I thought you guys were literally arg like arguing with each other. Um, and so that, that to me was just like, oh, okay everything came together because we're doing a kind of like idle performance. You know, that's, that's why it felt like an idle episode because I was like, oh, okay, story pauses. We go, we go, we go do a music video for the music performance. And then we get back to the story. That's, that's why, that's why it felt like, oh, okay. Also, I believe the director of this directed Love Life? Idol Master? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. So this is, this is why I ask, right? Idol fans, as this goes on, is, is this in your mind, music aside of an idol anime? And the reason I ask is because this is fucking peak. This, this is, this is so good. No, no, no. Okay. 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 Because the thing that makes this stand, not the slightest, okay. Feel, feel a little bit better. <laughs> the reason this stands out is because the writing and the drama is absolutely top tier. It's, it's absolutely top tier. Um, this is, this is what I expected Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night to be. This, this, this show delivered where, delivered where this show disappointed. Because both on the surface have very, very similar plot lines. There's even a plot line in both shows where a girl was an ex-idol and quit being an idol to pursue the genre of music that she very, very much is way more passionate in. The big difference is that I felt invested in every single character in this show. Every single character has such great character writing and not just great character writing, they have great chemistry together as well. There were so many times in this show that, you know, that I ended up laughing or I ended up vibing with just because just because the the dialogue scenes between each character was so well done. But on top of that, each everyone's personal drama was so well written as well. Each conflict, each storyline that was built up, it had a payoff that felt worth it. Um, I have not watched the final episode, so I'm really, really hoping that everything I'm saying right now, I'm hoping that they actually deliver with the final episode. <laughs> I, I. I'm 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 really really hoping that did it have a good ending? Did it did it drop it? Did it drop it? Final episode was good. Ah, ah oh, yes. Ah, oh. ah oh, okay okay okay. I'm so glad. I'm I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I was so I was so worried. I was so worried that uh, this was gonna this. I was so worried that this was going to age horribly. And I and. And uh, I, I would have just been like, uh, I, I would have just been like, oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, I take back everything I said. Take back everything I said. <laughs> it was not really an ending. Okay, okay. So the one thing I will say 
with having the director of Love Live direct this show, the music scenes were really good. The music scenes were really... <laughs> The music scenes were really, really well directed, and I could tell because um, the one aspect of Love Live that I think was really good from the clips I've seen is that every, every music video in Love Live was super well done and really, really engaging. And it, like every time I watch one of those music videos from Love Live, I'm like, Maybe we should get into it. <laughs> to me, maybe I should give this a chance. Maybe I should give this a chance. You know, and that's and that's the and that's the biggest uh, and that's the biggest thing I could say. That's the biggest compliment I can give because the scenes look so good that it almost makes me want to break down and give Love Live a chance. Um, but I but. Having said that, I would want to look for the same kind of writing and character drama I've seen in Girls Band Cry that I do in Love Live. Um, I'm also very, very impressed with the CGI. I know a lot of people see this, see the CGI, and they just go, Ew! Ew! CGI in my anime? Ew! Get, get, get out of there. Get, get that out of here. But no, I think it is not... Studio Orange level. It is, it is not Studio Orange level, but it is, it is just below that, in my opinion. It is, it is just below that. Um, one thing that really, really stands out for the CGI is how much work they put into character expression. Because so much of the big moments in this and so much of the banter and so much of the dialogue scenes and conversations rely on each of the girls just... Each of the girls just having a silly, not a silly, but each of the girls emoting correctly and giving the, giving the micro expressions. The micro expressions is what really, really sells a lot of the dialogue scenes and a lot of the chemistry between the characters. Gun gushing over girl, girls band cry. <laughs> Nina is the gremlin of the show. Okay, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, they did such a good job with the micro expressions of each of the girls and i think that that is what studio orange has done now with trigon stampede that is what has put the that is what has blah, blah, blah. that has what has justified the choice of cg animation in this show um because they can do 2d animation i do like the fact that when there is a flashback scene when they when there was a flashback scene they they did this really cool thing where they animated the flashback in 2D for the backstory. So aesthetically, it looks different with what is going on right now, you know? And I thought that was, I thought that was really cool. The writer himself even said Nina was such a pain in the, the ass to write. Yeah, I mean, Nina is, uh, is a very, oh, is childish the right word? She is not mature at all. But she is a great character, you know. I I probably would hang hanging out with Nina, <laughs> hanging out with Nina would uh probably, bro. She she is she is a fucking menace, man. <laughs> she she is a menace. I I would probably get annoyed very very quickly. But as a character, as a character, she is very she is very very well well written. You'll understand her better after the final episode. Okay, okay. Isn't it the same scriptwriter? Sorry, sorry, Yori. Is it? Let me double check. Who is who? What else does the scriptwriter worked on? Girls man cry. Mal. The voice acting as well. Oh, the voice acting is great as well. Who did the script writing this one? Let's see this. I don't see a script writer on the staff members. Maybe more staff. Script, series composition. Here we go. Okay, what is, what is, what is Blood done? Oh, okay. He, <laughs> he only wrote Steins Gate. Okay. Jesus. All right. Let's see, Steinsgate, No Game, No Life. 
Uh, oh, he, he, he also was involved with a few episodes of k -On as well. Okay, okay. Damn, he's written a lot. Oh, he did write... That makes sense. That does make sense. <laughs> okay, so... So, yeah. That... Dude, dude, this guy... This guy is fucking goaded when it comes to... He did... This, this guy is goaded when, come, when it comes to, like, cute girls achieving your dreams. He did this and he beat Euphonium. Girls Man Cry, a place further than, uni than the universe, and he beat Euphonium. Jesus Christ, man. This guy can write. Mans can write, man. Mans can write. Best drama writer of the industry? I, I agree with that now. I agree with that. Seeing what this man has done, okay, this makes sense now, why this delivered where this couldn't. I wanted this to be a place further than the universe. Turns out, it was Girls Band Cry. Um, and you guys are saying the ending was really, really good, and that it deserves S tier. So, I am happy to put Girls Band Cry in S tier. It was one of my favorite shows of this season. <clears throat> All right, next up. We have Delicious in Dungeon. Now, I have been putting this off for way longer than I should have done. I, I put this off for way longer than I should have done. Uh, I think a big reason was after Free Ren, I was just a little, I needed a little bit of a break from fantasy, like pure fantasy, and I had heard good things about Delicious in Dungeon. So I did not keep up with this weekly. I did not watch it for a very, very long time. And right now, I am not as far through as I probably should be right now. But from what I have seen, I am fucking impressed, man. I, I, am, I am very, very fucking impressed. S tier for me. S tier. Dungeon Meshi has some of the most interesting world building I've seen in my life. Um, it is a show about, you know, about people who go to dungeons and you learn about the dungeon and you, and then they feast on whatever creature, animal, myth, myth uh, mythical creature they can find. And from what I've seen right now, comedy, great. I love the chemistry between the cast members. Everyone Everyone works so well with each other, but the big thing that stands out to me is the world building in this, because it's... I can't remember the last time when it comes to world building, there has been this much thought and this much detail put into the smallest aspect of how this world functions. Because what really impressed me was how much research must have gone into this story whenever the writer was you know making some of the concepts of these different uh these different creatures because every creature that they eat or every explanation of the different creatures that are in there the writer has taken these you know very famous mythological beings and they have put their own spin on it they've put their own spin on it to make it seem like, okay, let's put thought into if this creature actually existed, how would it function? How would it logically function in a way that not only makes sense for its own biology, but how does it fit into the overall ecosystem of the dungeons and of the world of Delicious and Dungeon? Um, and it's just super interesting. It's, 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 it's genuinely just super interesting, man. So, right, the, the token levels of world building. Yeah, right now, every time I watch an episode, I'm like, I am getting hungry. I'm, I am getting hungry for, <laughs> for, uh, for, a, for a meat to cook, a, to cook a meat from a creature that doesn't fucking exist. That doesn't exist. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, it, 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 may, it, makes me, it makes me hungry. It makes me hungry, even though none of these dishes... 
None of these, uh, none of these dishes technically exist, man. <laughs> so, I, I don't have too much to say about the cast and characters right now. As I said, I'm not as far ahead as everyone else because this is a two-core series. But from everything that I've seen right now, and from what everyone has said, because... The first eight episodes have already like impressed me a fuck ton and I don't I don't see that going down at all. This is just a fun time. It is vibes and the world building is super super fucking interesting and I love it. And Studio Trigger only eight? Yeah, I know. Like I said, guys, by the way, I watched eight episodes. Only eight episodes? You haven't seen anything yet. So I as I said, I Put off watching this for a very very long time all eight episodes were watched last week basically it becomes so much better okay okay i mean it's 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 already great in my eyes man it's already great in my eyes it's already great in my eyes there are there are twists are you serious there are twists bro really really there are twists okay 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 don't don't spoil anymore don't spoil anymore <laughs> But yeah, I'm not sure if I enjoy it as much as Konosuba, um, but it's like, it's like, it's, it's like same tier. It's, it's S tier. I, I very, very much enjoy it. Right. Where's Demon Slayer? Let's do Demon Slayer next. I don't know why that wasn't on there before. All right. Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer, I, which I forgot was airing this season. It's, uh, Demon Slayer was airing this season. It was aight. It was aight. Not much to say about this. Build up season. Um, I thought that it was, I thought the vibe was off. I didn't know that this season was mainly filler for a lot of it. I did not know that. I went into this expecting another season of Demon Slayer. And I hadn't felt this before ever since I basically watched the, um, ever since I watched Naruto or something like that. This one will age well. It is a training arc. So I was like, the vibe seems a little bit off, but maybe that's just because it was a training arc. And to be fair, to be fair, it wasn't bad filler. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't bad filler at all. Um, it did very much feel like a build-up season, which it was. And everything that I saw from Demon Slayer... One thing I will say and give praise to is that it used the filler well in order to give more time for each Hashira. Each Hashira basically got an episode to flesh out their character a little bit more. And I liked that aspect of it. Having said that, during these episodes, I came into it with the assumption that all of this character time with each Hashira was in the original manga. So when the storyline started playing out, I was like, why does this feel inconsequential? Why does, why does, it, why does it feel like, why does the vibe feel off? from normal Demon Slayer. I, I, I don't get it. With the sound Hashira, I was like, okay, that's, that's a pretty decent episode. When it really like came, when it, when it really got weird for me was, when, it, when, it, when I really started to suss it out was when they had half an episode or it felt like half an episode dedicated to paper airplanes. Um, I was like, uh, okay, why, 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 why are we doing paper airplanes here? What is, what is, what is this, uh, what is this adding to the character? Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? What? Do you not remember that? Do you, do you not remember the paper airplane episode? Do you, do you not remember that? Do you, have, or, do you not remember that? Or have you forgotten? Have you forgotten about that? <laughs> that was the one with the Miss Hasura? Yeah, yeah. That was the one with the mist Hashira. And I was like, why does the vibe feel off? So then I go up and I go research it. And I was like, oh, okay. This is all filler. This is all anime original scenes. Okay. Okay. I, I, I understand now. I understand. So 
There's not really much to say about this season. It was still Demon Slayer. It wasn't bad. It's not a waste of your time. It's not a bad... It's not bad filler by any means. It's just I. It's just I. We're setting up for the next season. That's all you need to know. As I said, this episode is filmed. This is filmed before whatever the final episodes come out of Demon Slayer. So it's fine right as, as it is now. Um, it's a B tier. That's pretty much it. All right, final two. I've run out of water. So I'm going to get more. Tier lists always make me very thirsty. Why is there no music? All right. Hello. We are back with the final two shows that I am going to rate today. How many more episodes of Demon Slayer is left? Is there only one? One? Okay, okay. Last episode is today. Damn, AXB really... AX be really fucking me with this, uh, with this schedule, huh? Give me a few more days and I would have been able to watch the ending of everything. Same with, when's we show Kutensei's last episode out? Ah, okay, so much of my opinion of Bishoku Tensei is going to depend on the last episode. Oh, all right. All right, well. Well, well, but, but we are, we are. We are going to give my opinion today. <clears throat> okay. Second to last show. Um, go Go Loser Rangers or Sentai Daishikaku. I enjoyed this one a hell of a lot. This one had a very, very unique concept. I uh, haven't seen it before. It's basically... The Boys Season 4 is airing this season. I haven't watched The Boys Season 4 yet because I've been watching Sentai Daishikaku. If you didn't know, this is basically The Boys Power Ranger Edition. Uh, this, is, this is The Boys Power Ranger Edition. Um, and you have... You have a world where the Power Rangers do weekly shows against these monster of the week type monsters but really they are just the henchmen that they have to um that they have to repeat every every week where they fight the henchmen and the henchmen lose and it's always scripted but eventually one of the henchmen breaks off and he tries to kill the power rangers and i thought okay this is a very very interesting beginning and then it continued to get more interesting when the whole system of the Power Rangers got introduced, where they, it's not just like the five Rangers, but there's a whole academy of Rangers. Every Ranger is trying to like, trying to like vie for 
uh, to vie for the top spots. And so they have like an entire academy where they train these rangers up and they work their way up this up this organization to try and basically become the top ranger. And of course, a lot of the rangers are dickheads uh, because this is very, very similar to like the boys and stuff like that. This would be an S tier show. This would be an S tier show. But there is an entire arc surrounding this exam without really spoiling what really happens with the exam. And I just felt like it's gone, it went on for like a little bit too long. A lot of this, a lot of this series, a lot of this series was just them going through this exam arc. And I was just like, I really don't care about this exam much at all. Because here's the thing, it sets up this, right, so episode one, two, and three set, sets up this really cool premise, really cool world. Um, and then the, uh, and then the main guy infiltrates the organization and I'm like, okay, this is really cool. This is going where it's going somewhere really cool. And they set up this really, and they, and they dangle this mystery in front of you as well. There is this mystery aspect going on and I'm like, oh, okay. What are they hiding? What are they, what is going on in this world? There's, there is something deeper going on in the, in the Super Sentai world that they have set up. Some lies have been said, you don't know everything that's going on. And that's like really, really interesting as well. And I was, in, and I was invested in that. And then we cut to fucking five episodes or six episodes of them going through an exam arc, him basically fighting off against these different cadets who I don't really give, I don't really give a fuck about. I don't really give a care about. I don't really care how people become Power Rangers or that, that whole aspect of it. I care about what is going on in this world. How are we going to defeat the Rangers? Can we just, can we just get through all of these characters who I don't really care about as much as the top tier or the top Rangers or their subordinates? That, those are like the more interesting characters to me. I don't really care about the cadets at all. Um, and that was like, and that was like the biggest thing that had going against it for me. Um, but still, I say that, but I still enjoyed it. I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. It, it, this was a very, very good time. And I hope we get more seasons because I don't think everything is going to be resolved in, uh, by the end of this season. And I would like to see where this story goes. As it stands, still very, very much enjoyed it. And... Um, I will say, Yellow Ranger, not the main Yellow Ranger. I forgot her name. Uh, this this shows how much this shows how good at shows how good I am with names. Fucking uh, Yellow Ranger. Go on, go on, go on, go on me feeling some emotions, man. Go on, go on, go on, go on me feeling some emotions, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm terrified. I'm terrified. Got uh, go go got me feeling some emotions, man. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's it's good to see. I don't want to fix her. You can't fix her. It's good to see a character with just the right amount of crazy. You know, they, they don't go over the top. They don't go over the top with the crazy. It's just the right amount of chaotic. And mysterious and crazy, man. The void eyes, man. Man, it's it's the void eyes, man. You fucking know it. <laughs> the void eyes with with the yellow jumpsuit as well, which kind of reminds me of like Kill Bill or some or like some shit like that. It's like whoo! <laughs> with just like the right amount of crazy. The right the right amount of spice. You got it. You got it, my man. You got it. You got it. <laughs> yeah, what can I say? I'm 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 hoping we see more of her, man. And guys, guys, last up, last up, let me, uh, let me, let me, let me sip some tea for a second, guys. <clears throat> last up, we have Mushoku 
Tensei Sex Season 2 Part 2. Mushoku Tensei, the peak of all isekai, the peak of all character writing, the peak world building, the peak everything. Or is it resource music? <laughs> so, I have, uh, I have opinions about this season of Mushoku Tensei. I have, I have, I have opinions about the season of Mushoku Tensei. So, everything that I'm about to say right now is excluding episode 11, which I just watched yesterday or the day before yesterday. Um, so, episodes 1 to 10. Fucking S tier, man. Fucking, fucking S tier. Easy fucking S tier. God, this is just more Mashoka Tensei. And it arguably had one of the best episodes of Mushoku Tensei out right now. I mean, obviously, you see the animation quality of season one was fucking god tier and almost looked like a movie as well. But number one, the audacity to air episode 10 on fucking Father's Day. I don't know if... I don't know if... <laughs> if this was planned. If this was planned. I don't know if this was planned. Right? I don't know if this was planned, but if it was, I have not seen this level of disrespect and audacity ever since Zanki no Terra aired its 11th episode on September 11. I, 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 that, that is, that is the level, that is, that is the level, man. It was planned. It was planned. <laughs> it's like, it's, <laughs> Uh, that, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the Zanka de Terra one was a was a was a. I I said this respect. I'm gonna say as a disclaimer. I'm pretty sure that was just a, that was just a coincidence. <laughs> but this one though, this one, this one came with the fucking disrespect, man. You're like, all right, you you guys are celebrating Happy Father's Day. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. But the thing about Mushoku Tensei that also that always stands out is just no matter how slowly paced the episodes are I would actually say a lot of the first half of this season I might have even enjoyed more um a lot of the second half of the season was like dungeon crawling which eventually led up to this massive thing but I also really enjoyed the writing and the arcs to do with his sister and Rudy like and Rudy just learning to be an older brother at the older brother he should be and really just making sure and being like overprotective and kind of like having this realization of the type of effects he has on his sister's like emotional state i thought that was like super fucking interesting and no there was like no big fucking dramatic thing happening but to me that's where mishoku tente shines the most it's the character writing it's the small moments um and the lessons that you learn with every action you take Obviously, some big things happen. The Nan Nanahoshi episode was one of the best of the series. I know, right? I know. The, the fact, the fact that it was Norn as well, Nanahoshi. It was just like both of those episodes and seeing, seeing how all of those problems got resolved. Um, that was just like peak Mishoku Tensei for me. That was like, that was like great. That scream was so visceral. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, it just it just felt so human. The way the way it was as as I said, the way it was executed, it always it every character in their worst moments always feels so human and so well executed. And that's what I fucking love about this series. Um Episode 10 happened and it was horrible. It was uh it was not horrible, it was great. I'm talking about the events that happened. Uh, it was it was shocking. Uh, didn't really surprise me too much. It felt like this was a natural way for things to go, but it did not surprise me. Um, and I will say the action in that episode was fantastic. It was it was fucking fantastic. Uh, one of the best episodes that the series 
has ever done. Then, episode 11 happened. And I got told, I got told by some, some people in the fan base that this one, this one's going to be a filter. This one is going to be a filter. <laughs> This one's gonna be a fucking filter. And I was like, I can't be filtered out of Mishoku Tensei. This shit peak, man. This shit peak. What? How the fuck am I going to be filtered? Bro, I'm not filtered out, but I have not screamed that hard at a TV screen since reading Domestic Girlfriend. Swear down, man. Swear down. Sydney was up in her office? doing some work and he and she's <laughs> and she heard me screaming and and she was like what's going on are you okay and i'm like and i and all i could say was this bitch this bitch how what is going on right now what is what is happening she goes back in she goes back in and she continues to doing doing work and i'm just like ain't no way ain't no way that's that that's uh that's uh that's a sydney that's a sydney pov it's just <laughs> it's just me fucking losing my mind in the background man <laughs> wait you guys didn't know i i did not know i i did not know man i did not know roxy's so base no you guys are so fucking wrong man you guys are you guys are so wrong you guys are fuck do you know what this made me realize do you know what this fucking made me realize? You fucking Roxy fans look at that and you're like, based. She's she's still cute. Still cute. She's still cute though. I still would. And I'm like, you motherfuckers are the Taylor Swift fans of the Isekai community. I swear to fucking God, guys. You <laughs> You guys, you guys are worshipping this girl, man. You guys are fucking worshipping this girl. <laughs> She, like, she could, she could do a fucking errand, commit mass genocide, and you'd be like, yo, the holy relic, though. The holy relic. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and Roxy fans would admit it. Roxy fans would fucking admit it. Um, so, things were done in the final episode of Mishoku Tensei. Let's calm it down. Decisions were made. Uh, things happened in the final episode of Mushoku Tensei. And I am not going to specifically spell them out, just in case. Uh, okay, this is very, very important. Editor, please keep this in the recording because by... Because... At the time of this recording, the final episode has not come out. The final episode has not come out. Um, so my opinion could have changed because a lot of what I'm about to say very much relies on how the final episode plays out. Okay, because I might, I might make, a, I might make a just a full-on video about the entire last season of Mishoku Tensei. <clears throat> so... Spoilers, because there's one thing I'm going to have to spoil. I have seen a lot of talk about this episode of Mishoku Tensei, um, especially down to the fact that it's going down the harem route, right? And as soon as it did that, I was like, doesn't surprise me. I didn't know, I didn't know it was coming. <clears throat> I didn't know it was coming. But it didn't surprise me at all in terms of Rudy as a character. And did I believe for a second that Rudy was going to be faithful to his wife? No, not, not, not for a single second. We knew the type of person that Rudius was. Um, and I've seen a lot of people get upset about the fact that, you know, obviously what he did, what he did was a dick move you know what he did what he did was a dick move and what roxy did was also a dick move they, they you know they they both did things that were not 
great and did not and did not show their character in a positive life light that that i don't think you can argue right even if all parties are okay with a harem ending and a harem route the manner in which it was done felt a bit dickish <laughs> that is what's so good about it though that's see here's the thing here's the thing right here's the thing and i think that is fine to go down that route because one of the things that has made mishoku tensei stand out is the fact that every character is flawed every character is you know makes mistakes right every character makes mistakes and is flawed and they learn from it and they make sure that that big decision or that big mistakes leads to a learning moment to grow their character so hmm Where do I need to go? I need, I need, I need to, I need to pick my words very, very carefully. <laughs> I, I need, I need to, uh, I, need, I need to, I need to pick my words very, very carefully here, because, um, because I don't have a problem with the harem route. In, in fact, I have watched isekai that have gone the harem route. Uh, I recently read the isekai, um. Realist Hero. I recently read the Isekai Realist Hero, and that goes down the harem route, and when, when there was a point in that, that you realize it was, the, it was going the harem route, I'm like, fucking yeah, oh yeah. The, I was like, yo, finally, someone who, someone who is going down the harem route, fucking yes, yes, okay. So I have no problem with the harem route at all. My problem is with how it was executed. Because throughout the entire process of this episode, I just kept thinking, what does Rudy learn from all this? What, what is, what, when, when is the lessons going to come? Oh, <laughs> ads, ads. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait for the ads to come over. I'll wait for the ads to come over. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will i will wait i will wait for the ads to to be over because uh because uh, i'm i'm a i'm a i'm a rant right now i'm i'm, I'm in full-on rant mode right now we back you guys back you guys back you guys over all right all right so my, the biggest thing i couldn't stop thinking during this episode was what does Rudy learn from all this? We know he's a bad person or we know he's a flawed person, I should say. We, we know Rudy is a flawed person. He's done things that are creepy, that I don't agree with. But every time it seems like he did something like, like that before, it was, it was always done to at least characterize him or it was always done as a stepping stone for a learning lesson to come. So when the events happened, I was waiting for that moment when the consequences hit, right? I was waiting for that moment where you're like, all right, you've done a dick move. You've done a dick move. I'm ready for the tea, baby. I'm ready for the fucking tea. I, I, am, I am ready. I am ready for the tea to happen. And then it didn't. And then, and then nothing, and then absolutely nothing happened at all. There were no seeming consequences out of this. Uh, there were no learning lessons out of this. In fact, it really seemed, it really felt like the characters were rewarded for acting, for, you know, acting and uh, doing, doing bad things or, you know, act of, it really felt like they were rewarded for being a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense. They, it, it really felt like they got rewarded for being a dickhead. And I was like, I was waiting because I was like, 
Elianese. Oh, fuck. What's her name again? No, the, the fucking grandma. I was like, oh, oh, she's gonna, she's gonna bring down the whip, baby. She is going to bring down the whip. And then she's like, and then she's like, actually, it was my idea. I was like, what? What? And then I was like, okay, okay. Maybe Roxy didn't know. Maybe because I was like, Rudy, Rudy, you should really be saying right now that you have a wife and a kid's coming. Rudy, you should be really saying this right now. So I was like, Roxy, okay. Maybe Roxy doesn't know. Maybe she didn't know. Maybe she just was, you know, in the heat of the moment. And then it was like, I knew the entire time. And I was just like, what the fuck? What the actual fuck? Um, and then... <laughs> And then there's, there's there's so much, man. There's, there's 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 so fucking much. And then I was like, okay, okay, maybe Rudy, maybe Rudy is going to realize and regret his actions. Maybe there's going to be like, oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. And then the worst we get is like a, I'm a scumbag. Oh well, already forgotten about that. I'm happy now. And the the biggest thing that threw me off, right? The biggest thing that threw me off. Out of, out, out of like, out of all of this was this motherfucker had a 12 episode arc curing his depression via erectile dysfunction because he got fucking, ugh, because he got fucking dumped by a girl. His father, his fucking father just died in front of his eyes in the most horrific way possible possible and then that was completely fucking solved in like a millisecond thanks to some thanks to chasing some bird man i'm like i'm 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 spoilers i i already said i already said this this part was going to have spoilers man i already said there was there was no way there was no way like that like that that like the fact that we went through such a big carrot arc to cure, you know, to cure that part of his depression. And then this part, which would seemingly, should seemingly be like a much bigger deal. It was, it was, it was just like instantly solved in the weirdest way possible. And for the first time, it just felt like the writing was off. It felt, it just, it just felt like, it felt like there was no consequences to any action. There was no learning lesson. There was no point where people would try to become a better person. It kind of just felt like this was the kind of plot progression I would expect from a typical harem isekai, you know? That and, and, you know, I can come into Mushoku Tensei. I am, the, I am a guy that likes domestic girlfriend, that likes rent a girlfriend. I love the fucking tea. I watch so many trashy isekai. I have no problem with something being like your generic power fantasy, things going the harem route and um, things going the harem route and some spicy fucking drama with people making the wrong decisions. I fucking love that. But I always viewed Mishoku Tensei as like something different. The reason I'm getting so emotional about uh, the reason I, I'm getting so emotional about this is because I thought I thought this was such a beautiful story that had such a beautiful message to it um, that had that played into a grander point of trying to become a better person, of trying to learn from your mistakes, make make new mistakes, learn from those mistakes. And for the first time, it felt like that point of the story wasn't being, wasn't being, like, wasn't coming across in the recent, the most recent events. So, that is why it really, really, it really, really left me conflicted with this, with, with the events. Um, because, you know, I, 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 I'm not surprised that Rudy went the harem route. What I would expect to come with it is that he gets some shit for it you know when you when i look at this and i'm like man how the fuck did kyosuke get more shit for trying to date his fucking sister than rudy is for dual wielding without getting his wife's permission and not telling anyone about this um you know 
<laughs> at least we got a- At least Kirino got a fucking punch in the face, man, you know? <laughs> at least Kirino got a fucking punch in the face. <laughs> Kyosuke, I'm talking about Orimo, man. I don't know why my- I don't know why my mind went to Orimo, man. I was- I was just like, with everything that's happening right now, I feel like there should be something. I feel like there should be something that is, you know, there should be some consequences to his actions. Surely. Surely. Sylphie gave him permission when they first got together. See, that's the biggest thing, right? Like, seeing people try to, like, seeing people say, like, okay, okay, this, this, okay, these, these are the common, thing, common things I see about this world, right? People say that, oh, okay, polygamy is common in this world. Okay, I buy that. Uh, Sylphie gave him permission to have multiple wives. Okay, I buy that. Like I said, I have not, I've got no issue with the harem aspect of this. Um, but, no matter how you put it, Rudy told Sylphie that he would stay faithful. And at the end of the day, he did not ask for Sylph- He didn't even get Sylphie's permission, you know? It kind of se kind of seems like a dick move. It's a, it's it just it just seems like a dick move to me. <clears throat> and uh, and and Roxy as well. Obviously, Roxy. Uh, t you know, Rox, Roxy doing what she did for a emotionally vulnerable Rudy as well. Also, kind of seems like a dick move. Whatever. Characters are flawed. That's not that. That was never my big problem with it. I- I just want more tea. <laughs> he is very much selfish. He is very selfish. That is very much clear. Like I said, I know he's selfish. What Rudy did didn't surprise me at all. What surprised me was the lack of repercussions. You know, that's what surprised me. The, the lack of repercussions and the lack of consequences. Um, because I thought that this was going to lead into some kind of learning lesson. But... This is why I said it very much depends on what happens in that last episode. Episode 12. Episode 12, whether he gets... Going. Okay, I'm, fi I'm finishing up the stream. Whether he gets any, at least like the smallest pushback, you know? when Even when his father did what he did, at least there was some fucking repercussions to it. At least he got some pushback. You know, he, it almost tore his family apart for fuck's sake, you know. So maybe this plays into something wider. I don't know. Maybe this will get addressed in the very next episode. I don't know. But I think the best way that I can verbalize my opinions of what happened in episode 11 as it stands without seeing the wider consequences, if there are going to be any, it just didn't sit right with me. It just, it's the, the way that, the way that it played out just didn't sit right with me. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. And the only reason, and I would not give a shit at all if I thought Mishoku Tensei was on the same level as your spicy domestic girlfriend, as your renter girlfriend. I would be cheering for this shit. But to me, Mushoku Tensei to me was like, peak isekai. So that's why I'm being so harsh on it. So, we will have to see. Um, I don't know how to rate this. I know this because it all depends on uh, the, the final episode. So we'll have to see how the final episode plays out. Gonna be interesting. Gonna be interesting. Gonna be interesting. Anyway, though, that was it from me for today. I'm sorry that a lot of this was a Mishoku Tensei-ass rant, but I have got to go have dinner now. So, hope you enjoyed that video. If you agreed with my, you know, comment on some of your favorite, uh, favorite series in the comment section. Whatever, man. Whatever. Uh, like and subscribe and whatever. Um, and don't worry, Mushoku Tensei fans. I am still a Mushoku Tensei fan. In fact, I have, I've till now been the biggest Mushoku Tensei defender, like <laughs> defender that I know, which is why I just got so fucking passionate about it. Okay, who do we raid? Who do we raid?
Let's do Rainho. She raided me last time. I'll return the favor. I'll return the favor. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the stream. And I shall see you guys next time. It won't be a while since I'm in AX, but I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.